So in the last video, I promised an alternative method to the logarithmic differentiation approach I showed you here for computing the derivative of x to the power of x. The other way to do it is to exploit a fact we already have up on the board here, which is that the exponential and the logarithmic functions are, are inverses of each other. Right? So we want f of x to be written as e to the log of f of x. Okay, so that's e to the log of x to the x, which we can write as e, if we bring the exponent down, to the power of x log x. Okay, now the other thing that you'll remember is that if you take the derivative of a composition like this, where the outer function is the exponential function, there's a standard pattern, right? We take the derivative of the outside, but nothing happens when you take the derivative of the exponential function, evaluate at the inside, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, right? So we have this standard derivative pattern whenever you're taking the derivative of an exponential composed with some other function. Okay, so with that in mind, we know that f prime of x is going to be the derivative of e to the x log x, all right, which is e to the x log x, there's the outside, times the derivative of the inside. And again, I'm adding one extra step here just so that we, uh, we can follow everything. So what's the last thing? Well, the last thing is do the derivative. But while we're at it, we can also do one simplification because remember this e to the x log x was really f of x. And f of x is x to the power of x. So this whole thing can become x to the power of x. Then we take the derivative. It's going to be the same as it was over here the natural log of x plus 1. Okay, so either method gets you your result. You can work with whichever one um, you feel is easier. Uh, some people prefer this because then you're just sort of working with the, you know, what is effectively the exponent over here, and you don't have this exponential term kind of along as baggage the whole way through. You just have to put it in at the end. Um, the danger with doing it this way is there's kind of two possible places to make a mistake. You have to do some implicit differentiation when you take the derivative of the left-hand side. And you've got to remember to multiply by y when you're done. Right? Um, so you've got that extra step. So if you find that you're forgetting those steps, maybe this is the better way to go. Uh, on the other hand, you might find that for more complicated functions, this is a bit cluttered and this is a bit cleaner. Um, so pick whichever one you like better. They're both going to get you to the same answer.